Hello, I'm Robert, and you're welcome here in my busy little shop. On today's episode of What's on My Workbench, I've got a uh, project. It's another type of belt that I've not made a video on, and it's a Ranger belt. And at the Prescott Leather Show recently, I purchased this template set from Pikes Peak Saddlery. And uh, I like to buy some of his templates, uh, you know, support his small business there. But the, uh, the Ranger belt is a belt that when I've made it, uh, I think I said before, I feel like I'm kind of refiguring out how to make it each time. And it's probably because I've only made a couple of the Ranger belts. So I thought I'm gonna buy this template. We're gonna follow along and see uh, how well this pattern works just following it. He's got a lot of information on this template here as far as placement of holes and slots and such to create the belt. And if you've ever looked at a Ranger belt and not built one, they look a little bit like hard to figure out the sizing of that. So we're gonna see if this template helps take the mystery out of that. Before I get into that though, I wanted to do a little bit of a shout out. I have a uh, subscriber that um, he comments on every single one of my videos and I, and I appreciate that. And he's not into leather work. He's along for the, uh, I guess, entertainment value. Maybe some people see some entertainment in my videos. It's Knowles Garden Tractor and Firewood. And uh, he sent me a couple stickers. So I'll place these on my boxes here. And, uh, and I'll always have pictures of it there. He's got a picture of, looks like three of his tractors and he's out of his log splitter working. I'll put a link also to his channel in my description of the video. So I'm glad you're here to shop with me today. Let's get this project started. I've got the uh, template here and there's a lot of information on this template. And there is the, the placement of the buckle here the uh, end cut for the billet and for the belt. This belt is gonna be a one and a half inch wide uh, belt. And it's got laid out here. It's got two marks here to signify the ends of the slot in the billet for the buckle. Uh, and then there's a, a mark here. So there's a lot of information here and I think it's all good information. But if you're looking at this, then the next thing you're gonna say is, well, how do you figure out the length of strap you need for the belt overall? And it's it looks confusing and you start laying it out here and you could lay this out here and then measure to where you've got the distance that you want between the buckle and the hole that you're gonna be using on the, on the belt here. Uh, or all you need to do is to measure from where the buckle mounts to the end here. That's one inch there. And then you need to measure from the hole used, which is the center hole, to the end here. So that is five and a half here and one there, so it's six and a half inches. So it makes a really easy math. I went ahead and wrote it on here, so I don't have to measure it each time. But for the one keeper, it's six and a half. For the two keeper, it's eight and a half. So then uh, I'm gonna make this as a 38 inch belt. So 38 inches plus six and a half would be, I know, 44 and a half inches. So I need to cut my leather strap for my belt at 44 and a half inches. And I do my belts as two layers. And I've got two layers of leather here that uh, comes out to about 11 ounces. Depends how hard I push here. So 10 and a half, 11 ounces. And I usually shoot for a belt that's between 10 and 12 ounces. And if I guess as a word of warning, if you're wanting a thicker belt, keep in mind that that's the thickness of this part of the belt. Then you're gonna have your billet that attaches on it here. And then you're gonna have more thickness there. And if you get to where your uh, let's say you want to make a 16 ounce belt, you make a 16 ounce belt and then a 16 ounce, um, uh, uh, billet, then you're going to have a half inch of leather there. That's a lot of leather. And, uh, I've had some people say, well, I make the billet thinner than the belt. And this to me here and where you hook the buckle on are the, the weakest points on your belt. So I guess if I was thinking that I wanted to be thinner somewhere, I'd be thinner in the main body than I would be of the billet, or ideally make them probably both pretty much the same. So I had uh, originally these two layers together were uh, over 12 ounces slightly, and I went ahead and pulled them through my splitter to get down to where I'm 
at uh, as I measured there by 11 ounces. So enough mumbling on there. I just wanted to, to lay that out because when I first looked at it, I'm like, well, how do I figure that out? And I'm like, you know, just try to make this simple as possible. You just need to add this distance and the distance here together. So 44 and a half inches it is. So I'm going to cut this to 44 and a half inches. And I always look through my, my straps to see if there's any uh, marks I can't, I can't, uh, you know, live with. And it's, this is a pretty clean strap here. This will be my top. And the one I pulled down will be my liner. So I'm going to measure, I need 44 and a half inches. I'm going to add, add an inch to that so that when I get the two layers together, then I can, uh, trim it to finish length. So I've got my two straps and I'll do my other straps on that here in a minute. So the next thing I need to do is set up and I'm going to use uh, contact adhesive on these two layers here. I'm not gonna have you along for that whole thing there. I've got plenty of videos of applying contact adhesive, but I put two coats on each, allowing them to dry between. When they're tacked up, then I'll layer this up and I'll use my burnishing tool to uh, burnish that in. I'm going to do that for this, and I'm going to go ahead and do the same for my billets. And I'll come back. All right, so I've got my belt layered up, and I've got the pieces that I'm going to cut the billets out of layered up. And um, I burnish these together. It makes a really good contact between the two layers. But if you've ever pushed something across carpet, you, you want to like roll up. Well, if you just layer these two up here and you start burnishing, there's a good chance you may move the leather from one side to the other. So I kind of stitch it in place with my hammer. And um, that keeps it from wanting to move. Then I'll burnish it in. Now, if you don't have a, a glass slicker, uh, and I didn't for a long time, you can just, you know, tap along the edge all the way around and, and a pattern on it with your hammer and it'll hold it in place. You don't have to have a glass slicker, but they're not terribly expensive. I think I picked this one up at Tandy and then I just made a little leather holder for it. All right, so the next thing I need to do is cut my belt to length. And if you remember, I needed 44 and a half inches. I'm just gonna use my round strap in punch here. And I'll use the same on both ends. You know what, I'll put an English point on here because the, the, um, this strap will have an English point and that way there's two English points. All right. Now here's where, in my mind, this one, uh, you could make this belt where it had less of a Western flare. If you wanted less of a Western flare, then what I would do is I would not add this sculpted detail on the end. I would just continue that strap out here straight, put a uh, English point on this end and do the same thing with this one, an English point on there. And then that would totally change the feel of the uh, look of this belt. So I'm gonna scribe this on here. So this here indicates the end of the of this strap. So I'll bring it out here and I'm just gonna center it on here and I'll put a little mark here. That indicates the end. And then I'm just going to scribe around this pretty heavily heavy handed because I'm gonna be cutting along there. And I think I've said it before, when you're cutting, if you try to cut through the whole thing at one time, it's harder to follow the line. So I think it's easier just to concentrate on the line and as deep as it is, it is. And then uh, work on the second cut because the knife will want to follow that first cut pretty well. I've said it before, it's hard to make myself do it. But if you're not comfortable cutting the shape, then um, what you can always do is you can cut outside of it and sand to it. I'm gonna take this over now. I'm gonna sand my edges here and I'll refine this tip a little bit. That'll be the next step. There's a couple of things and the information's not on the template. 
So I'm gonna cover some of the things that I think about. First, this strap here is gonna be attached to the uh, belt and it's gonna be sewn in all the way around here, um, you know, down to probably about here. And then this part here, part of it tucks through the belt strap and is, a, is riveted on the other side. Or you could, uh, you could leave it on the top, but it, it doesn't look very nice that way. It looks better the other way. So it'll go through and out the other side. The reason why I'm mentioning that is that when you decide to round over this, and I do have to cut my ends here yet, but when you decide to round over this belt to take these hard edges off, I would not take it off the back side of this billet, just the front, okay? On this one, this will be mounted on the belt much like this, and it will be sewn down again up to about this point here, and then this will be loose that'll go through the buckle. So what I'll do here is I'll round over the front of this part of the leather, and, but from here back, I'm gonna leave that uh, square on the back because it makes a cleaner attachment point there. I suppose if you rounded it off, it would just you would see that rounded on the back side, but I don't like that look. But from here out, I'll round off the whole thing, both sides. I hope that's clearer, clearer than mud. So let me grab my tools and we'll round these over. Somebody asked me how often you sharpen these, and I sharpen them just about every time I use them. I don't, I guess I, maybe I should show that, but uh, I had someone say they sharpen them when they use them and they sharpen them when they put them away. So I guess they'd get sharpened twice between each use. So one thing that we need to do here before I forget, and that is we need to create the slot for the billet to go through uh, on here. And the way you do that is you line this up here with the end of the belt. I'm just going to use that as a, a marker, get myself lined up. And the slot goes from here to there. And that will allow this strip of leather to go through. And it looks a little bit tight for a one inch strap. but that's where it goes. And I guess I'd rather have it tight because then you're leaving extra leather here, but uh, not too tight. I guess we'll see how it is when I do that. Well, how wide are those marks? Because my, my punch is wider than that. Hmm. Um, if you're using this, a lot of times you'll punch a hole, punch a hole, and then you will um, connect them with your knife. And I'm using a bag punch, so I caught it, but. The holes on this are only three quarters of an inch uh, apart. And you could probably force it through there, but I'm gonna be using my one inch bag punch and even it's slightly narrower, so it'll give a snug fit. So I need to line up on these two marks that I created there and get it spaced equally on the strap here. If you're unsure, you can always drop a small square on here to help line yourself up. and that will allow this billet to slide in there. Now, you might say, why don't you go ahead and put the holes in for the adjustment on the length of the belt? And I always do that last. And the reason why is because if I get this shifted somewhat on the belt uh, blank, that probably won't matter as much. But when I pull the tape and I do my final measurement and I mark the spot, then I'll know that if it's a 38, that it's set at 38. So that's the reason why I'm not doing it yet. Uh, I didn't talk about finish on this belt. This belt here is gonna be just an oiled finish. So it's not going to have any dye added to it. So um, if I was gonna dye it, uh, I usually dye and then I burnish. It To me, it makes the edges easier to burnish. It tends to, um, I don't know, almost stiffen the fibers here a little bit so they're easier to slick down. And when I'm burnishing, a lot of times I use denim but if it's gonna be all natural, I try not to use denim on that because I have had it, uh, even on old denim, I've still transferred some color. So 
So I'm gonna do that on the rest of the belt and the uh, other parts as well. So assembly would be the next part, which would be putting this in here, laying out and stitching around this to sew that on there, uh, the same on the other end. But I'm going to add stitching along the edge of the belt strap itself. And is it needed? No, it's not really needed. Uh, it's more decorative. Uh, I think it does help with to control stretching of the belt. But on a belt that's this thick with two layers of the, you know, the uh, skin side, hair side of the leather on there, I don't think you're going to get very much stretch out of it anyway. But uh, since I said before, so for me, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to add stitching along the edges of this, and then I will get ready for my assembly. And I am fairly close to the edge with this uh, stitch line. And part of that's because I want it to go past this uh, hole we made here and not, you know, impede what it's doing there. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and make all of my stitching holes and I'll get this stitched. And since you've seen me do that before, I'm going to skip that part. And let me know in the comments, do you want me skipping those parts or not? Um, I guess part of it depends. If you're following along all the time, then you know how I do that. If this is the first video, then you are like, well, how do you do that? So I guess I have mixed feelings on that. I'll show just a couple of glimpses of me doing that work. So I'm completing the stitching here along the edge of this Ranger belt. I decided to use white. When I oil this and with time, the leather will end up fairly dark brown. Um, so I figured the white would stand out nice against that brown. And I decided also to stitch along the sides of the two billets um, so that it matches. So, you know, I took the length of time to make this belt and more than doubled it with the uh, stitching. And you wouldn't have to do the stitching. The, uh, the, I think the belt's plenty strong. I do, as I said before, I do think that the stitching helps control some of the uh, stretch of the leather. These are the two billets here. And um, what I'll do is I'll stitch, I'll start here in this hole here and I'll stitch all the way around to here. Then once I attach this to the leather strap, I will uh, use my chisel and I'll make holes through these and I'll double stitch through this to the belt and that'll be the mechanism that holds it to the uh, to there. And when I finish up over here, it'll be stitched all the way around, but this part will be through uh, the belt strap as well. And the same on this. This will be without going through all of it, and this will be through all of it. So I finished all of my stitching along the edge. I used the white Tiger Ritz of thread. Uh, when I oil this and then over time, this will really darken up and the stitches will stand out. I think it'll look really nice there as a set. Uh, and I kept going here. I've, uh, I went ahead and looked at using the uh, Laramie buckle set. So I went ahead and did that on here 
and here's how it will look here once I get this all installed. Uh, I think it'll look really nice. Let's go through like this. So the next thing I need to do is to figure out and get everything placed here for uh, sewing this in place. Now there's one more piece of the puzzle that makes the um, uh, Ranger belt unique to other belts. When this is on here, and, and if you re if you know a Ranger belt, you can turn the volume down here for a moment here while I explain this to everybody else. But the reason why there's two layers here like this is that when this is sewn together here and you wear this belt, when you go through, you the um, the billet goes through the buckle and this piece here of the belt goes behind the buckle. And so there's one more loop that goes around this part of it. That will be just a leather loop that keeps that in place. Now, there's probably some people right now saying, what's the point of all of this leather and, and such? And uh, I haven't looked up the origin of the Ranger belt. I believe that the the reason why that was created that way is this belt style was originally in wider uh, leather and didn't actually go through the loops on your pants. So you would have potentially a belt or a rope that went around your waist on the pants that you're wearing to hold those in place. And then this was your gun belt. And if you have, uh, you know, hardware on both sides that you're wearing, maybe a, a knife sheath as well. This gets really heavy. And it, this was to make the belt long lasting. And the other thing that it did is if you have that on, on your waist and you don't have it through the loops to help keep things aligned, what ends up happening is the belt would want to twist like this as you put weight on the outside here. And it wouldn't fit comfortably, wouldn't look right. So when you put this keeper on the back and you run it here, it, it holds this in place. So that's my uh, belief of why the Ranger belt was made that way and why do we make it that way today? Well, it's uh, a unique looking belt and uh, I tend to really like the uh, Ranger belts as well. So um, there are people out there that want things that look, you know, old or it's a different style. So the next thing I need to do is I need to make the loop to go around here, which is really pretty simple. I'm not gonna do any of the stitching and it'll just be a simple loop and it needs to go around two pieces of this leather like that. So I'll cut me a strap here and, and make my loop. And it's really easy. I'll show just a really brief part of making that at this point. Put around here. And I'll put a little nail mark here on the length. So I cut it to length, just put a couple of uh, stitching holes in here and I will stitch this together. So this loop then, is going to be on the back side here. So when this comes through, it'll go through underneath here. The next thing I need to do is attach these pieces. And um, on this end, you have to kind of get these things in right order. I suppose you could attach this and then push that through, but I want to make sure this is uh, snug here. So I'm going to start off by putting my Chicago screw here, which will hold this in place. There's probably, probably better ways to do it than I do here, but I tend to just kind of a little bit of, I wouldn't call it trial and error, but I do it my way and then I make it, I make it work. So I'll push this through here line up here on the back side make sure it's all centered and i'll put a mark here i didn't show on fitting the laramie buckle i've got a video on doing that and it's a little bit of its own process as well 
And I left this long enough so that when I put this on there, I can continue my sewing uh, around the horn here. I always put a dot of something, white glue, or in this case, I'm using fingernail polish here, in the threads of the Chicago screw. So once this is set, it will not uh, come undone. The Chicago screws will back out over time. Pretty much guarantee it if you don't put something on those threads. Okay. I don't want a bunch of slack in here because this buckle, will it's going to pull forward some here. So it'll stretch a little bit there. And that's about right. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put me a spot. Here. And here and here. I'm going to use my chisel and make marks here. And I don't want this shifting. That would be uh, unattractive if it shifted. So there's a couple of methods you could do here. I've done it multiple ways. One is I could contact adhesive this in place here. And that, that works if you want to do that. Uh, what I'm going to try this time is I'm going to use double-sided tape on here to hold this in place while I create the holes, and then I will sew it in place. Now I can line up that spot that I made there and get this set down here in place. All right, so now that I've got that there, I'm just gonna take my chisel and I'm gonna work my way around the belt here. So I'm going to uh, continue doing that around here and then I'll do the same thing, the same process on this end, lining up the end of the belts together here, the, pieces of leather and and uh, taping down and installing it here as well. getting here uh, towards the end and I had intended or had thought about putting the concho through here just through the billet and uh, and I would put a spot of uh, fingernail polish on there but I was still concerned if it ever backed out I wouldn't have a way of fixing it so what I've done is I've got some longer screws here so I'm going to poke through the uh, two layers here and I want to install this concho here And it's got two little nubs here to keep it from rotating. Um, but when I looked at it, I couldn't really see uh, an up and a down with it. So I'm gonna go with this way on it and I will do the same rotation on the other side. Okay, it's all sewn together. Cut the hardware here, the conchos. I need to oil it, but before I do that, I'm gonna go ahead and put my uh, holes in here for the adjustment on the belt. And 38's the target size, 39, 40, and 37, and 36. I'm gonna try one smaller hole here because this one inch buckle has a little bit smaller 
tongue on it. So we'll see how that fits. I can always make it larger. Yeah, I like that. All right, one more item to do here. See if you guys know what it is. I'll go ahead and oil this, and then I'll come back and I'll do a little bit of a recap of my feelings on the template, how that works. I think it looks pretty good. When the uh, oil soaks in this first time, it's gonna return almost to its original color, and then the next oiling will uh, darken it up some. Let's talk about this. So the template, as far as the templates go, I think they were uh, easy to understand if you have just a bare minimum of leather work knowledge. I think you can figure out what he's trying to say here on his pattern as far as what holes to use where. So I think that worked really well. Uh, the adding the six and a half inches, right that on there, that helps figure out the length of it. I'm assuming most people could probably figure out how to get around that if they didn't figure the easiest way to do that. So I think overall, I liked it. Um, so here's the belt, the finished belt. And I, of course I made it a lot more complicated than it needed to be. You could create the Ranger belt without any of this side stitching on here, which that's what took a lot of the time on this project. It's all hand stitched. Yeah, I've got a sewing machine over there, but I like to hand stitch my belts. And it's all hand stitched. Uh, this will end up, once it's aged, once you've worn it for a bit of time and the oil's had a chance to soak in and maybe pick up some burnish from uh, you know in and out of your belt loops, this will end up as a, a light walnut color. And I've got several veg tan leather belts that I've never had a dye on it. Uh, you don't even have to put anything else on it besides the oil. You can put tan coat on it if you want a little bit of a sheen or if you want to help protect it from the elements, then uh, tan coat and the tan coat allows you to oil through it. So that's it there. I would say that it's a very useful tool. I can't remember now how much he charged for the three-piece template. I'm going to say it was, I'll just say $30. It was someplace between $25 and $35 for that. And it's through uh, pikespeaksaddlery.com. I'll put that in the, the description as well. Uh, that's the Ranger belt. And uh, I think it's a classic look. And probably you don't see it everywhere in the world. So it's a little bit of a different look. But... I do like those. There is more meat here. There's no doubt about that. Uh, but I think it's a, a pretty classy look, a very Western look. I appreciate you being here today in the shop with me. Please like, share, and subscribe. But more importantly, have a great day.